Watch you guys got another video here for you about new PCs and used PCs and what is the best bang for the buck for you and what you should be looking out for before you go and spending all your hard earned cash. Now there's a lot of YouTubers that create content about used PCs and you have to take a lot of that with a pinch of salt because a lot of it is entertainment and also they are making revenue from those videos. So they're going to tell you a lot of things that you may want to hear uh, when you're looking at the video but when you break it all down is it still a viable project for you to do and will you get uh, a good return of investment when you're buying some of this old stuff now whether someone gives you that stuff for free then that is still worth doing because obviously you're getting it for free but when you're spending money on old used parts you need to be very careful and you need to be careful of what stuff you're buying because there's a lot of people that will be selling their old rubbish off uh, for pretty high prices. So let's go through some of the things you can look out for. So I've gone on to a popular site here where we can take a look at some of the pricing. Now I did put low, um, low to high and postage and you can see here HyperX Fury 16 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3 kit two times eight gigabytes of RAM, which is 90 pounds. Now you may get this cheaper. I see a lot of people using just the old generic RAM and stuff like that. And also a lot of people are overclocking some of the older systems just to even get close to a modern day system. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But as you can see here, I've already marked it down 90 pounds and we're gonna put that onto our list. Next up, we need a CPU, and a lot of CPUs that people use are the i5 processor, which is geared up for gaming uh, PCs. You can see here, i5-3550, pretty affordable processor. You can pick them up pretty cheap. Very good processor for gaming, uh, and that is going to come in, just say for instance, uh, £32.95. And you may get the odd one that's cheaper. And of course, this is another part of the... Uh, thing that you're going to have to do when you're buying new you can just go to a website pick out the cheapest deals and buy them when you're trying to get a deal for used pcs you need to do your hunting and looking all over the internet to try and get the best possible deal possible so you don't get ripped off and this is another thing a lot of prices have been inflated due to the popularity of used pc parts so be very careful when you're buying now i'm not saying that it's not worth buying a used pc because they're still uh, doable in 2019 but you just need to get it as cheap as possible to make it a viable uh, project or a return of investment for yourself when you buy it because there's no point buying an old system which is already old like say for instance 2012 2013 uh, going on to now 2019 and moving forward there's not going to be much upgradability for that system so that's what you need to take a look at when you're buying stuff so I've put this down on my list and we're looking at a motherboard here now obviously if you're going to overclock the CPU you're going to need to get a pretty decent board I've just found this one here at 43 pounds and 50 pence and you can uh, try and do your research a little bit more this is just to show you uh, the um, options you're going to have available now there's a ton of motherboards out there available and you can just do your research some of them are dirt cheap some of them are a bit more expensive. Again, a lot of this stuff is used. It's high risk and of course, uh, much more higher power consumption. And you're probably gonna see a lot of higher CPU usage on a lot of these older systems compared to a modern day system. And that's another thing you're gonna have to take into account. When you're gaming, you'll get a lot of stuttering and shuttering. And the reason for that as well is the CPU is pegged out to 100% sometimes on these older CPUs. So let's take a look, look at a, a graphics card here. I've got a graphics card and I've just gone for the RX 580, which is a brand new card, okay? We're gonna stick a brand new card in there. Now, yes, you can get a cheap card, but I'm gonna do Apple, apples to apples uh, comparison here and show you like for like with new versus uh, old, okay? So we're gonna put a new graphics card in both of the machines. So now we've got the motherboard chip and RAM. We're gonna need a case and everything else, which I'll show you. Uh, right now on the new system. So let's go ahead and pick out some stuff. So we've got a new system here. We're gonna go for a Ryzen 5 1600. The price here, 
is 119 pounds and 49 pence i've put that onto the list i've also gone ahead and got the motherboard here which is 45 pounds and 98 pence we're not talking about overclocking or any of that stuff we're just going to get it bare essentials get it put into the case and of course you can then use this as a gaming system you're going to need some memory and uh, i've chosen here the cheapest stuff i could find which is two four gig sticks which is 44 pounds and 99 pence if you want to cut that down even more you can go for a one eight gigabyte stick if you wanted to at 38 pounds and 49 pence but i've just gone for the uh two four gig sticks here next up we got the case and we're going to use this in the old parts as well so there's no uh, sort of difference between the two apart from the old motherboard chip uh, and ram and that's what we're going to be putting into the case so it's going to be the same for both new and old okay and this way it's really fair so we're going to get the case here and we've also gone for a cheap psu which we're going to be using in the old case as well now you could go and buy an old psu but personally at 33 pounds for a brand new psu it's not worth going around hunting for uh, a second hand used power supply because you're probably going to end up uh, finding a lot of tough ones or a lot of bad ones or even ones that are going to cost you that much anyway for a used one and also we're going to stick in a solid state drive in both as well so i've tied all these prices up together and you'll be quite surprised at the differences between the two so for the total price for the new one with the graphics card it's going to cost you 493 pounds and 33 pence and for the U system, it's going to cost you a total price with the graphics card £448.96. So as you can see here, the difference is not a vast amount. You're talking, uh, you know, what we got here. Let's have a look and be really sort of uh, accurate. So it's £44.37 difference for the two systems. That's all the difference is between old and new. And basically you're going to get a brand new computer. All the parts are brand new. Nothing has been used before. It's new out of the box. It's going to have a warranty and you can send it back if there's something faulty with it within that warranty period. The used parts on the other hand are used and basically you don't know whether they're going to be faulty or there's going to be any issues later on down the line or anything like that and for me the difference is the price i mean it's only 44 pounds and 37 pence so it's a no-brainer really you might as well go new and uh, also unless you're getting these used parts for virtually uh, free or near enough free then it's not worth doing you may as well buy new and uh, get brand new parts with warranty and also uh, unused it might as well do that because at them prices it's foolish to buy used and if i went and got that memory and got one stick i would even get another six pound off of that so it'd be um, less than that so let's have a look here so uh, six pounds equals 38 pounds and 37 pence so you can see the price difference is uh, only a small amount of money and i could even bring that cpu down to a lower version even a 1500 and it will probably still be that i5 processor and uh, there's not going to be much difference now you're going to get the odd person that says oh i've put a brand new graphics card in a used pc and that's what's bumped the price up well i could put a used graphics card into a new pc if i wanted to and the price would still be the same difference so there is not that argument there what you're getting here is no value for money by buying used parts of that price compared to a new pc you're going to have to make sure you get that used pc ultra cheap or free to make it worth doing okay so basically when these people sell them they're selling them with bare bones in them so you're going to have to upgrade and that's where the money comes into it the benchmarks themselves speak for themselves now a lot of people are just showing gameplay and that's a common thing what they do they try to smoke screen you which is a bit of smoke and mirrors to say oh look at this processor still performing well in 2019 yet all they're showing you is basic gaming now a lot of the i5s are four cores four threads some of the earlier i5s were two cores so watch out for those but any four core 
uh, CPU will play games and there's going to be a difference of you know five to ten frames if that between you know uh, CPUs you can see Ryzen 1200 will play games with the right graphics card because it's four cores four threads and you'll have no problems at all it's the multi-thread that comes into it and the multitasking when you want to do video editing and stuff like that and if you look here there is a massive difference <laughs> it's 180 percent compared to 100 percent multi-thread performance index it's just when you come down it's just like night and day and i just don't understand how people still think today that an old system is capable of doing what you would do in the modern day it's just not the case you're getting six cores 12 threads compared to an old four cores four threads and all you're getting is a difference of 38 pounds and 37 pence it doesn't make no sense to go and buy an old system when you can buy a new system like that yes it's ryzen first gen who cares it outperforms that i5 3550 and a proper probably a lot of other i5s that are released out there as well and really some people probably say that's not a fair comparison but it's about the price comparison that we're talking about not what the processor is it's what you can get for your money and you'll probably get even a better deal than that you probably for another 10 pounds more you could probably get a 1700 uh, Ryzen which will even more which is a Ryzen 7 which will absolutely annihilate that um, chip there so really when you break it down like this this is what you have to do to show people what the real facts are so raw single thread performance there's not much difference and this is where the gaming comes in and this is why you don't see vast differences between uh, two processors like this so when you see youtubers or youtubers doing benchmarks and again look at these two processors and both of them are pegged at the same sort of frame rates well I mean basically they're not really utilizing the real raw power of that CPU but if you want longevity and you want upgradability and you want a PC that's brand new and you want something that does everything you want it to do other than just gaming then yeah you've got to look forward to buying a new system I mean look at the Cinebench here it absolutely creams it and also going on here when you get onto the 64 bit it absolutely annihilates it as you can see so this is where the real tests are this is what you're going to see when you start looking at the real facts so don't be fooled by a lot of youtubers that show you old systems that are playing games yes they will play games uh, but also the new system will play games as well but it will also do a lot more than the older systems let's just take a quick look at the cpu benchmarks you can see here the i5 3550s is 6903 and also the ryzen 5 1600x is 1300 and 234 now you can also overclock the pants out of that ryzen as well which will absolutely uh, cream that i5 no problem now another thing I wanted to point out is these sort of systems here. Now you can buy these uh, on the internet on marketing sites like uh, eBay and uh, Craigslist and also Gumtree and places like that. The idea here is to buy these cheap and I mean cheap. Uh, you're not going to be getting these at this price because if you do then you're a fool and you're going to get your fingers burnt. It's not worth buying them when you're spending that sort of money. The time you put a power supply in there and then put a graphics card in there it's going to cost more than what it would have cost to build a brand new system so bear that in mind okay a lot of these companies have done rollouts and they've now got these systems and they're selling them on at high prices and hoping that someone is going to buy it they won't put a graphics card in there and stuff like that because that will cost them money they would rather pass that on to you and let you do that and you're going to be the one that gets your fingers burnt and you won't get no return of investment if you buy these now you see me cover these before this is an i3 uh, 3220 version you can see it's a very expensive machine uh, super old uh, built in probably around about 2012 or something like that 16 gigabytes of ram and they want a lot of money for it now they've already 
uh, got these for free because they've done a rollout for some sort of company and upgraded all their systems and they took all the old stuff away and now they're sending them on at a stupid price. Now don't get fooled for this sort of stuff. Uh, this Some of this stuff does have proprietary parts in it and you're going to have trouble trying to convert this into another system. It can be done. Uh, but it's sort of cannibalizing it a little bit to get it to work. Now, you will see a lot of these on sites like eBay where people have ripped the innards out and put them into another case, paid £25 for a case, stuck them in there, and then selling it as a gaming system when it simply isn't. So don't get your fingers burnt and buy those sort of systems. And like I said, for an extra £20, you can get a Ryzen 1700. A Ryzen 1700... Uh, for an extra £20 on top of that X 1600X and I know for a fact that a Ryzen 7 today is an absolute beast of a CPU compared to any old generation uh, CPU like i5s or anything like that it will absolutely annihilate it when it comes to a good all round uh, multi-threading and stuff like that now of course when you play games with something like this you're not going to see vast amounts of differences. So all these big YouTube channels that show you benchmarks, it's pointless. There's not much difference when you're getting a frame here or five frames there and you're spending all this money. Game benchmarks have never really been the sort of go-to sort of um, information that you want to see when a chip can do what it can do. It's basically giving it hard tasks to do, like rendering videos, zipping files um, unzipping files you know stuff like that where it's really utilizing its power and uh, basically gaming is not going to really do that so that's why you're seeing a lot of youtube channels that show you playing games in 2019 on an old cpu which will basically do exactly that go out there and find yourself an i5 processor as cheap as possible and it will play games uh, with a an RX 580 or even better card than that if you want to it will still play games but what you've got to try and do is get it as cheap as possible and the pricing is gone up for used parts now I'll leave a link for this uh, article here from TechSpot it basically gives you all the PUBG CPU tests and it shows you uh, for the player unknown battlegrounds at 1080p and it shows you all the different CPUs and the amount of frames per second you get and you can see how small the differences is from Ryzen uh, 1200 all the way up to i7 there's not a lot of differences and it tells you the CPU utilization I'll leave the link in the video description now what about Xeon processors and old office workstations like this I see a lot of people on YouTube creating content with this if you're going to be buying this stuff it's going to be for a bit of a fun project but as for a proper gaming system, you don't want to be buying stuff like this. It's too much of a headache. You're going to run into a lot of problems with proprietary parts, uh, sensors, uh, you know, different pin layouts for the fans. And I've seen people ripping the guts out of these and putting them into another case and then selling it as a gaming system. That's just wrong. It's not the right way to do things. You can see here the HP Z400 are freely available and uh, six gigabytes of RAM. They don't tell you what Xeon processors in there. It's gonna be a board similar to this one, which you can pick up for 39 pounds. Again, if you're buying something like this, you're gonna to have to then put a Xeon processor in there, some RAM. You will run into some errors and stuff like that and some different pin layouts for the fans. And it's a bit of a palaver. I would advise you to buy your Xeon processor on its own and get a different type board which is not proprietary which means you can then uh, put in your own fan headers and fans and you can do your own coolers and stuff like that. Steer clear of stuff like this which is obviously again from Dell which is again proprietary and it'll have all different parts in there which you can't then uh, take out and put into another system. China's come up with options like this here where they've created their own board which comes in a package and a bundle with a Xeon processor and if you want a bit of fun you can buy something like this again if you want to buy a board which is compatible with Xeon processors then go ahead and buy a board which is brand new and something like this uh, which are a much better option for you and you can go and buy the Xeon processor that you wanted stick it in that board and have as much fun as you like over overclock it play games and do whatever you want with it it's a lot better option than actually 
go and buy an old workstation. Also, you can see here we've got one here for £27. And you may be thinking that's quite a bargain, but let's just take a closer look here. And this is what you need to look out for uh, when you're buying stuff. There's no mention here of any damage. But when you look closer, you can clearly see there is damage to the pins. Now, this is a common thing on eBay. You end up buying something thinking it's going to be working. And of course, there is damaged pins right there. There's also no backplate on here, and uh, which is pretty bad. Uh, that means you're going to have to then find a cooler with a backplate. There is an IO shield, but no backplate. So watch out for those things. Missing IO shield, missing backplate. They're the ones you want to steer clear of, okay? And also damage to the pins. And of course, you're going to get the drama of the... Uh, the pins weren't bent when we sent the board out and then of course you've got a dispute and you're going to have to try and get your money back and it's all a bit of a palaver to be honest with you it's never plain sailing when buying used parts especially on places uh, like those sites so be careful when you're buying stuff on those sort of sites sometimes there's people on there that are just out to scam you and make money off you now before I get lynched in the comments section I'm not telling you not to buy used PC parts because I like used PC parts myself. You just need to know what you're looking for and how much it's really worth and how much that hardware is worth to you. Now don't go and pay some of the prices you see on some of these sites because they're way overpriced and you're gonna end up getting ripped off. And when you come to resell that uh, PC, you're not gonna get what you think you're gonna get for it because it's not worth the amount of money. So if you're looking to do quick flips with your PCs then you want to try and get it as cheap as possible so you can flip those PCs and get a bit of profit now you're not going to make massive amounts of money doing this you're just going to have to uh, work it out for yourself what is the right sort of price point to pay for certain hardware and that takes time and also experience okay anyway I think I'm going to wrap this one up so be careful out there guys if you are going to be buying used parts make sure you do your research first and make sure there's nothing out there that is cheap enough to buy brand new that can't outperform that used parts that you're going to be paying for because it's not worth doing otherwise, okay? Anyway, have a great weekend and I shall see you again for another video real soon. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you want to talk about anything like this, then pop on our Discord server and you can ask some questions over there and I'll be happy to help you out. And there's other people on there that are happy to help you out also. Anyway, thanks again. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.